Hi, H3N2 is in the news nowadays. You are all probably familiar that it is a type of the flu virus. The virus H3N2 is not new, it has been known for about 50 years and it causes infection throughout the year in places like India, which are tropical. There is a recent outbreak, that means the number of cases are higher than usual, so that's why it's called an outbreak. The flu viruses are of four types, A, B, C and D, of which the A is the most notorious and causes, you know, epidemics and pandemics. You might be already familiar with the swine flu pandemic, which happened in 2009. That one was called H1N1. Then you might have also heard about the bird flu infections that keeps getting reported from time to time from pole trees that is called H5N1 and now we are dealing with H3N2. Now all of these names have H and N which are the proteins on the surface of the virus. I will show it in the form of a picture and you can pause your video and see. The flu virus used to spread only in winter months in the temperate places. In tropical places like India, we have two peaks. One is between January to March, like it is happening now. The other one is between August and October, later in the year. So the ICMR dashboard on flu monitoring will also show that. The symptoms of the flu virus begin about two to four days after getting the infection. They are fever, sore throat, fatigue, muscle pain, ear pain and occasionally it causes pneumonia and vomiting diarrhea in small children and more scary and serious in complications are shock and seizures. The fever is very high and comes suddenly. It goes up to 104, 105 like that and it doesn't seem to respond to the common you know, fever medications like paracetamol and ibuprofen. Most families are experiencing this. They are having to give medicines round the clock and still the fever doesn't go down below 101 or 102. They are using stepid sponging and even then the fever doesn't go down below 101. It continues like that for about 24 to 48 hours when it suddenly gives way and the temperature becomes much more normal and goes down to 100 or less than that. So that 48 hour period is a very scary and anxious time for most families. That is when they end up going to doctors more frequently or they end up in hospital getting admitted. So I would suggest that if you feel that when the child is having high temperature and you are able to take care of it and when the temperature is reasonably down, the child is active and feeling well or in the case of an adult they are feeling well, then I think you should be confident that we are dealing with the flu, only a viral infection, nothing more serious. Same is the case with adults, they also or older children, they complain about headache and body pain and the fatigue is the most severe in these flu infections. They feel so tired and sleepy and not able to do their regular activity. That is also a characteristic of this flu infection. At any point of time, if there is signs of breathing difficulty or the person is feeling very unwell or they happen to have a seizure, I think that is a medical emergency and they should be seen by the doctors immediately. The spread of the virus happens by aerosol like in most other viruses. It happens by aerosol, by coughing, sneezing and also some droplets of the virus containing saliva or sputum landing on some objects which we touch and then we, if we touch our face, etc., then it comes to us. Now, prevention, we can think of it as preventing the virus from coming to us, which is like common sense precautions, that is, you know, cough and sneeze etiquette, that is, uh, you know, when other people are coughing, etc., we maintain a distance of about at least three to four feet. Then if we have wash our hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, that is also good before we come home. 
Alcohol rubs are useful against flu virus. They were not useful against the adenovirus, but against flu virus they are useful. They reduce the viral load in our hands. And avoiding crowded places is also good. Crowded places, closed places or semi-closed places are very high risk for spreading of the virus. The next thing is to prevent spreading the virus to others. If somebody is ill, then we should isolate ourselves, self-monitor, just to make sure that we are well and at any time we are concerned, we should take medical help. And at the end of the illness, we can go out to colleges or workplaces. If we have to really go out, we should be wearing masks and practice cough etiquette so that we do not spread the virus inadvertently to other people. Then the most important part of prevention is also the vaccine. There is a vaccine available and the vaccines in India all have the H3N2 as part of their spectrum. It will be called as influenza A Darwin in the current vaccine boxes. I'll show you a picture of the side of the box which will illustrate the, what I'm telling you about. So this vaccine is good at preventing the flu infection. The WHO recommends it highly and it is easily administered at any pediatrician or adult physician. It does not cause any side effects. There will be a slight pain in the injection side, but otherwise there is no serious problems. The vaccine can be given for all children from age 6 months up to 5 years and for people above 65 years of age. That is the international guideline, but I feel that in India, you know, anyone who is afraid of contracting this virus can take this vaccine. The vaccine is indicated for all people who are at high risk for getting complications from this virus. The people who are at high risk for getting complications from this virus are pregnant women in all stages of pregnancy, people who are less than 5 years of age or 65 years of age, or people with chronic medical illnesses involving the heart, the lungs, or their immunity, or they have high uncontrolled diabetes or hypertension, etc., or those who have weak immunity. Also, medical professionals are also at high risk because we are always dealing with this cough and cold and <clears throat> people with flu. So we are all asked to take the vaccine. The people who are very high risk for severe disease and mortality are also the ones which are less than five years of age, especially those who are less than six months of age. So if you have some newborn babies in the home and the mother has to do breastfeeding or take care of the baby, then the mother should practice wearing a mask all the time while handling the baby so that they do not transfer the virus to the baby. Also, taking the flu vaccine during pregnancy, especially during the middle trimester or towards the end of the pregnancy by the mother will transfer some of the antibodies to the baby and hopefully prevent the flu infection from being affecting the baby. So that is also a very useful to think about. Again, if there are some bedridden people in the house or there are very unwell people in the house who are on therapy, then we might have to think about people who visit our house from outside like cooks, maids, drivers, etc. with whom we spend long periods of time. Those people also could be vaccinated. All the caregivers need to be vaccinated so that they do not bring the virus from outside home. So these are all the useful interventions that can be done. Treatment, as in all viral infections, it is symptomatic. We treat the fever, the headache, the body pain, etc., vomiting, diarrhea, etc. But in high-risk people, which I have mentioned before, if they contract the flu and it is diagnosed or we suspect flu, then we can start an antiviral medication that is usually prescribed and your doctor will be able to guide you appropriately. The most important thing is not to be scared about this virus. Thank you.